Hello, everyone. Thank you for all tuning in. Um, it's very strange why I say this because uh, we are in a Zoom chat, but we cannot see who our audience is or know how many of you are out there listening or uh, responding to us because uh, we have people actually managing our OBS um, and telling us uh, whether there are any questions and comments. But anyway, okay, um, that aside. Um, Introductions. Uh, my name is Liana, so um, I'm I'm the curator for um, Open Call. Um, so depending where you are geographically, uh, where you are geographically located, uh, good evening, good morning, and also good afternoon. So it's just past uh, 9 p.m. here in Singapore. Uh, it's been a pretty cool day uh, because uh, it's mostly very hot and humid here. So we call it uh, natural aircon, uh, air conditioning today. So welcome to this uh, special um, in conversation session uh, with uh, three SIPF open call finalists and uh, yours truly. So apart from speaking about uh, this year's uh, team uh, departing and arriving, uh, the group will also be sharing more about um, the creative aspirations, what inspires their visual languages and uh, the personal drivers and challenges that they face uh, creatively, especially with the photographic medium. So at the end of the conversation, um, the online audience, yes, you out there, wherever you are, uh, gets uh, a chance uh, to participate in our conversation by asking us questions. So let's uh, start off by introducing this session's uh, esteemed panelists from uh, the Open Call Showcase. Uh, they all come from various parts of Southeast Asia, uh, each having established their photography practices through the years and engaging audiences with their own vision narratives and style. Uh, okay, so ladies first, and in uh, alphabetical order, we have uh, Singaporean Cathy Ann Lim. Uh, Cathy graduated uh, from uh, London College of Communications at the University of Arts uh, London with a photography major and has works uh, pre uh, presented in both uh, Europe and America. Her photography draws from a memory, displacement, and technology, a dialectic com combination that explores the spectrum of clarity and also fleetingness. Her uh, SIPF open call entry, White Noise, is currently on display at Rocho MRT Station. Uh, next, our second panelist, panelist is Sui Wait, Hong. Did I pronounce her name correctly? Sui, yeah. uh, from Myanmar. Sui's uh, photography, photography examines personal histories, relationships, and collective identity. Her documentary work spotlights on environmental changes attributed from urbanization in her hometown, Yangon. Uh, aside from photography work, she works as an independent researcher for uh, UN agencies and NGOs, uh, for, and um, as well as being uh, one of the founding members uh, of Tuman Collective, an all-women uh, Myanmar-based photography collective that is dedicated to visual storytelling. And last but not least, uh, we have Miti, uh, Miti Rengrit, yeah, right? Yes. Uh, who, who is also uh, SIPF's Open Call winner. So Miti is no stranger to SIPF, having his works and photo books exhibited at various uh, editions of uh, SIPF. Uh, Miti's practice uh, explores issues close to his heart, like the effects of capitalism and the changing political landscape in his hometown, Thailand, often incorporating found photography with his own. So by the way, uh, both for SIPF, for this SIPF, both Sri's and Miti's works are located at 37 Emerald Hill, Block 3. Uh, it's still ongoing now, uh, to the end of the month. Uh, last but not least, and for those who are just tuning in, my name is Liana. Uh, I've worked previously with SIPF with four other editions as a project coordinator and as also as assistant curator. Uh, so this edition is uh, pretty special because I was invited back to curate the open call works. And I will be your facilitator and also timekeeper for this uh, panel conversation. So besides uh, working with SIPF, uh, I'm also a full-time visual artist and a part-time uh, educator. Uh, my practice uh, you know, revolves around the research on contemporary societies and relationships um, such as modern romance, as well as studies on photography and visual language. Uh, so to share some gossip, uh, okay, maybe not gossip, but uh, more on... Uh, personal encounters. Um, so I conducted a few public tours uh, for the open call showcase at 37 Emma here last month. Uh, so during these tours, uh, I share with participants more about the open call works, like you know, the selection process and some of the curation uh, decisions and processes. Uh, usually uh, before the start of each tour proper, 
uh, I would also suggest to everyone to encounter the team departing and arriving in terms of, so, of proximity versus distance. So not in a literal sense, but more of what you know, their position as a viewer or witness means when looking at these photographic works. So for example, the feeling like how we may be close to something yet feel so far away. So in a very pro paradoxical case of looking at photos, although photos are so-called evidential, you know, documents or fact-based objects, you know, very often the truth may be in some way altered, appropriated, or even distorted. So hence as purveyors of uh, photos, uh, we are often left also to define the order of knowledge, space, and time. So hence, I would like to start off our conversation uh, with this question in regards to the SRPF team. Uh, so to the panelists, uh, what did the team departing and arriving meant to you individually when deciding on what to submit? And could each of you also explain more about the working format or process uh, for your work selected in open call? Okay, so um, in regarding to the term of departing and arriving, I, I look at this in in terms of consumeristic cycle as a consumer of how people departing and arriving through a convenience store in a network circle. Um, 7-Eleven are uh, placed on every street corner in Thailand. There are 24 hour space that offer one stop shop for essential from paying bills through to buying an insurance for COVID. Do you mind going to the next picture, please? Okay, so this, as you can see here, this is from my 7-Eleven app. There's plenty of um, stores for me to visit. Um, so the space offer uniform layout, brightly lit room, and full blown aircon. And this in contrast to the heat and busy streets of Thailand. So you know what you're getting from the first jingle you hear at the entrance. And these sensitive experiences create a weird sense of assurance and comfort that you can rely upon. Do you mind going to the next image? Yeah. So this is one of the 7-Eleven that I took. And if you notice, there's another, um, used to be British children brand as well, Tesco, which is now bought by the company that owns 7-Eleven. So um, I, I was actually feeling, feeling this pretty intensely when I was traveling up around the country for this project. Um, I was just looking out for a petrol station with a 7-Eleven store attached when I was traveling, you know, for that kind of averagely taste, hot pork bun and an unsweetened soy milk. As it offer no alarms, no surprises. There's no risk involved and you know exactly um, you know, the, the food or the service that you're getting at every store all across the country. And as people here visit the stores almost daily, or, you know, some people visit two, three times a day, it became an economical phenomenon within the last few decades. It has changed the local landscape to a point where it has been noted for replacing the temple as one of the major institutions of the Thai social fabric, the other being um, school and home. Do you mind going to the next picture, please? So this is the sort of, you know, um, cornflakes and milk you can get. And next, please. But in a convenient order, the other part of the work, we witnessed the store as the target for petty crimes all over the country. These small crimes often presented through CCTV capture, not only reflect the social con condition, but it reminds us that we are being watched not only through CCTV, but our digital data are collected through our personal accounts tied to the stores. So once you lock into the membership, your data are being used, mined or sold by the company itself, and they would know exactly your behavior based on the frequency of your, um, of your shopping time or the consumption. So for example, you know, the, you know, those beer um, after work on Friday night or, or something like that. And as Chosha Zuboff coined the term surveillance capitalism, 
And this is how we are unwittingly linked to major monopoly through that false sense of convenience and comfort that they seem to offer. And it raises a question in the long term, how would this affect small and medium businesses? And for us as a consumer, how do we recreate this new economic order, which is just widespread all over the world? And it's within this endless loop of consumeristic cycle of departing and arriving, of departing and arriving, that has become firmly intertwined and cemented into our lives. So this 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 is how I um, interpret the theme with departing and arriving. Yeah. So there are two main parts to the project, and 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 you can just flick through it um, for the seventy for, for the sunset shot. So these are uh, a convenient sunset. So this these involve me driving all over the country to take um, images of. 7-Eleven during the sunset time. So they are uh, so just uh, one shot once day per day. And for me, sunset is a seductive period. It's a moment of transition. The light is beautiful, but it also hints at the night and what, what it is to come that we don't know. So it raises the question of safety and comfort when you see the fully lit store against the darkness of the night outside. But it also hints at the precarious nature and the state we're finding ourselves in regarding the role of, um, of the major monopoly that's affecting not only personally, socially, and economically. So in a convenient holdout, which is the second part of the project, these are images that um, I found online through um, news media site regarding the holdout, which happens surprisingly often in, in the country. Mainly the small, very small crimes of, you know, for something such as father stealing nappies for his child or, you know, some sort, um, some sort of cash kind of that's, that's available at, at the till, usually for very little amount of money. And crimes are mainly committed by non-professional. And along with this forgotten news images, usually buried behind a more exciting stories of soap stars or the news of the hours. I also collected sensationalized headlines of these crimes and compiled them to the work. Um, you, you can just flick through some of the images. So, so they, they, all, they almost work as a a news that has been filled in, you know, during those kind of quiet periods. And they're there, but we, we don't really notice them. <clears throat> and this is, um, so this is just the example of some of the texts that I found online. So they, they were originally in Thai, but um, translated into English. And yes, um, can, can you stop at the text, please? And because of the sensitive nature of um, the content of the images, it, it was important for me to try and reduce the sensationalist nature of the work. So originally they were collected in colors. I converted them into a more than so in black and white. And I cropped images deliberately to suit the storytelling nature of the work. Most images are are quite grainy and the bur burglar faces are often obscure. And through this process, I wanted the convenient hold up to be viewed as the body of work rather than for people, for people to concentrate on it as a single image or a single incident that's shown online to avoid that kind of tabloid like nature that they were originally presented in. The naming of the um, the choice of, of using the word a convenient holdout was, was also taken into consideration. I, I wanted to convey a less aggressive tone instead of words like attack or death that are often used in the headlines, which um, 
more than often it, it lead away on the discussion of the issues that I want to present. Uh, next picture, please. So um, just a little bit about my kind of my past work that um, I have I have always been interested in images and text, and um, these are some examples. So for this one, it's um, Thai politics no two. It's images of um, the former Thai Prime Minister collected in 2010 on a Facebook group. So since um, after he fled, some people started to make a, a meme of, of whereabouts, um, where, where he was. You, you, you could go through the, the images, please. Can, can you flick through the images? Yeah. So um, it, it was on this Facebook group and I, I collected, I just collected them without thinking of anything in, in particular. But then one day the group, the group just suddenly disappeared. And it, it made me realize that the internet as, you know, is, is an unstable form of, um, of archive. And it's important to collect this sometime overlook um, images source. And you, you know, we, in, for example, in, in our life, let's say for our phone as well, when we change the phone or we lost the phone or, you know, sometimes we forgot the password. It, it's, it's so easy these days for us to um, lose, you know, those part of information and, and history. <clears throat> and next please. And for this work, it's, it's a work on tech and this one was made in 2014. You, you just flip through. It's an excerpt taken from Bangkok real estate advertising. So these are collection of um, texts that I found in um, public and online sites of the, the um, newly built condo. They were made in English and often to uh, quite surreal and strange um, taglines such as jump to high and happiness, ultimate happiness is waiting for you, or ground zero for a new way of living. So um, I compiled them into a poetic book as an artist to itself. And, and this is another example of how I, um, I incorporate the text into a more site specific installation that's almost turning the, um, the space into a more Real estate children, right? So for me, process-wise, um, could you go back, please? Yep. So for me, process-wise, for, for both image and text, I, I I find in the way I work, it, it's in a similar manner. So I I view text almost visually. So when when I find something interesting, you know, like if, if I'm outside, I might snap it with my iPhone, or if I'm online, I you know I I capture it or I, I copy and paste it like like how I would um I would take pictures. So um so they they're not so different in in, in that way of the the, the the process that I made uh, the, the the process that that I go through. But for me, text offers the um, communicate in, in a different way and it adds details and layers. So it it allow more possibility to uh, interpret and question the work. So in the instance of a convenient holder, which is a collection of black and white grain images, they, they sort of act more like a mood piece, while the sensationalistic headlines carry that layer of extra content. And I think if, if those texts were to be um, reduced to a caption role, in, I don't think it would work as well in, 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 in this instance. Yeah, so um, this, this is about it, to answer you, two of your questions. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, I will go. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Shua Mo. 
my work, uh, which uh, has been exhibited as part of the SIMBF Open Call, uh, is named Demada, which is about uh, women's uh, menstrual experiences and how cultural and social taboo influence us within the Bami's uh, society context. Uh, when I first uh, saw the SIMBF open call and the team uh, arriving and departing, uh, it uh, remind me and reflect uh, me uh, of uh, how uh, our uh, women uh, uh, and our uh, bodies uh, mean to us. Um, uh, it reminds me of a time uh, when I was uh, designing a dummy book uh, for this uh, uh, project. Uh, actually, I was also uh, making a dummy photo book with uh, that project. When I designed the book, uh, I, I uh, uh, edited that uh, and uh, highlighted in a way that uh, our menstrual uh, experience, our own uh, menstrual period. I referred to my own uh, menstrual experience. I edited uh, in a way with the little caption text uh, with uh, day one, and I used uh, the images uh, like which uh, uh, metaphor, like uh, little red, uh, little blood, and like kind of uh, like uh, flowing in accents. Um, and after that, like in the next pages, uh, like, uh, I used the text uh, day two and three, and I used more uh, intense, uh, more painful, and uh, like more heavy images with more red and blood. And, uh, and then I, uh, like after uh, day uh, four and five, uh, again, like I used uh, lighter images with little red, like with the feeling of like more like a uh, relaxed, uh, uh, images uh, and so uh, it reminds me of our uh, own body like uh, phenomenon of like uh, coming in and like finishing and repetition. I used uh, uh, that uh, uh, similar cycles uh, four or five times uh, in the book. Uh, uh, and again, it also reminds me of uh, uh, a time I had a conversation uh, with my mother about her menopause experiences. When I started working uh, this project, I was mostly working with the girls and women who are still having uh, their uh, menstruation. But when I first uh, heard and learned uh, about a menopause experience, experience uh, from uh, my mother, it uh, reflect me of our um, own like uh, collective experience as a whole. So uh, we uh, women, uh, as a women, like regarding our body uh, natural process, uh, we have uh, that, uh, you know, uh, coming in process like in our body and we live with like that menstruation experience most part of uh, our life and like as uh, kind of uh, like like uh, ending experience, uh, like uh, part of our, our body. So to me, uh, my work uh, uh, remind, uh, reflect uh, as uh, something like uh, of uh, like women's journey, uh, like which has like uh, uh, like uh, coming in and finishing and that uh, repetition process. Uh, that's the way I uh, interpreted my work regarding the theme like departing and arriving. Yeah, thank you. Or uh, maybe I also uh, keep uh, talking about the uh, process and how I uh, uh, executed the work. Uh, so my practice on photography is I try to tell personal stories uh, from which I connect and examine Eliza social issues uh, or the other way around. I also work on social documentaries and political stories, uh, uh, drawing and reflecting my own uh, personal position within the issue. Uh, so my background is of, uh, in my gender and government uh, uh, development, uh, like working in international organizations, mostly working in women, peace, and media programs over uh, uh, a decade. So for all the people I usually hang out and like the women around me like often speak up uh, about uh, their uh, social, cultural, and like uh, traditional taboos uh, against our body. Uh, again, I'm also like quite um, 
uh, spontaneous person. So when like something uh, touch my head, I just want to walk out. Uh, and so at that point, actually, I started this walk in 2019 after like hearing like uh, frequent conversations like uh, within uh, like my uh, feminist uh, circus. And so I was like, okay, I wanted to do something like from my feminist position. And, but at that point, I uh, did not uh, have a solid idea how I would be presenting or executing what I want to say. Uh, at first, I uh, interviewed uh, the women like who are like quite close to me. Uh, I asked uh, all of them uh, three uh, main questions and um, follow at once. Uh, I asked all of them about their uh, first uh, menstrual experience. Uh, and uh, um, uh, second one is uh, uh, how uh, they learned about uh, uh, like menstruation and how uh, uh, they were taught like uh, uh, when the first experience is from like, older generations and their parents around uh, social culture and uh, traditional uh, taboos and like uh, influence over us and and uh, the last one it uh, uh, what does uh, menstruation uh, mean to them um, uh, and and uh, at the same time I was like testing out an image making process uh, um, uh, 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 at the beginning uh, uh, since the beginning I had uh, a kind of idea of uh, okay I will use uh, that uh, uh, stating approach uh, than a, a documentary format but I did not have like very like solid uh, uh, idea and but after like some interview and like some uh, image making exercises I got a uh, clear idea and it uh, became very interesting process for me a process for me I shared a men's uh, experience and conversations with uh, the woman so uh, and then I built up my system so the way I walk is uh, I interviewed a woman but I did not photograph her so after uh, our interview, I reflected our conversation and I think how I would uh, uh, execute uh, 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 how I would put uh, her experience uh, uh, into like visual. So in that case, I uh, collected and prepared like my pros, uh, et cetera, and I contacted another woman. So I photographed uh, another woman uh, portraying the experience of the woman uh, who I found interviewed. So in that case, that woman will ask me oh, why uh, 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 did I shoot this way, that way. I explained and shared uh, the first woman experience to the second woman. And after our uh, photo shoot, uh, uh, so we collaborated uh, like throughout the process. And so I interviewed uh, that woman. And, uh, and then I photographed another woman with uh, the previous woman experience. So that I am like uh, Italian and sharing like uh, women's uh, menstrual uh, experiences. And so some experiences are the same, uh, some are uh, different. And technically it was quite a new uh, process for me though I have uh, already walked uh, like a staging approach. I have uh, never walked uh, that uh, um, like more of like studio practice and like also I have uh, never used that much pros uh, in my practice but actually the, there is not a well uh, rounded studio work I had my own way of uh, 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 improvising uh, so I had that red and blue sorry white uh, bad drugs and I uh, carry it uh, around and so most of the photos were made uh, in different indoor and sometimes in my room and outdoor places with uh, natural light and using that so these are behind the uh, scene photos are like at uh, 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 a training I conducted with young and girls. Actually, I was commissioned by an organization, not as a photographer, but as a, a researcher. So I was uh, teaching young girls like research methodology for their um, uh, community research program. And so we had uh, like mentor conversation. And so they helped me uh, as the collaborator and they helped me in like photo shooting and so I walked uh, that way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, with my project, um, White Noise, um, 
the I'm Kathy, and uh, I'm a visual artist uh, based in Singapore. Um, with uh, White Noise, the project began to kind of simmer in 2014. And uh, around the time I was kind of moving overseas. So um, just before I was about to move, my family member and I came down with uh, dengue fever, which is uh, quite an unpleasant experience. And uh, my family member was actually hospitalized as uh, his fighting cells for the fever went down to, to zero. And uh, um, there was this sense of like community as well. Uh, we were gifted kind of like a papaya leaf juice um, from nuns uh, who blend these uh, leaves, which increase like the blood platelet count as well and um, helps to like fight this fever. Um, I mentioned briefly that I kind of experienced dengue just before I left to study and work overseas. So my last memories of home in a way was combined with remembering this experience. And um, whenever I would think of, of Singapore, I would think of uh, this experience and it formed the sense of uh, self-induced homesickness in a way. Um, next slide. Um, I was researching on fumigations in Southeast Asia with dengue, and it is really specific to this equatorial band around the world, which is subject to the epidemic potential of uh, dengue, Zika, and malaria. And it initially began uh, dipping into the process section, kind of uh, following pest control experts around the island from 2017. And uh, this is where I learned that fumigations have been around Singapore for a very long time. Uh, since the 60s, um, there are images of people fogging like kampongs uh, in this sort of like the same manner. And uh, but despite all of the technological development as like a highly urbanized city, we're still using these somewhat like um, these specific methods of environmental control. Um, yeah, next slide. Uh, fumigations themselves are, are uh, actually really harmful to, to the other insects and uh, good bugs. And uh, this will kind of slowly be phased out by misting, which is a much more ecologically friendly and more like targeted towards mosquitoes by spraying chemicals like directly onto leaves. Um, while shooting fumigations, the buildings and kind of a constructed landscape like kind of change, but the botanical cultivation um, remained very familiar to that of uh, that I experienced in my childhood. Um, next picture, please. Thank you. Um, so this project kind of sits for me somewhere between the autobiographical and the Anthropocene um, with the Ixora, for example, which is the flower that you see here in this picture. Um, as a kid, I would kind of like suck the nectar of this flower. Um, whilst I was like out playing, uh, but kind of now like seeing it with this alarming smoke, what does that mean with regards to urbanization and um, hence beyond that with this idea of globalization and with displacement. Um, next image. Uh, so this is one of the images featured at Rocher MRT station for the festival. Um, featuring like a, a cloud of smoke poolside at a condominium estate. And uh, looking at the symbol of the cloud through the camera and its state of impermanence, um, it also harkens to this, this idea of like unknowing and the state of in-betweenness. Um, next slide. Uh, this is one of like the more recent images of the series, which shows fumigations in a public housing estate and, and actually quite rarely happens, um, perhaps about once or twice a year. But uh, as some of you are aware for 2020, kind of like alongside the pandemic, um, recorded cases for dengue in Singapore was at an all time high this year, like 35,000 cases and the previous high of uh, 22,000 cases in uh, 2013 with uh, 29 deaths by end of September last year. And um, that may not be the full number for, for 2020. Um, so the government and the NEA had taken precautions to ensure public housing estates were treated as well. And uh, so here the smoke is being emitted from drainage systems in, in, in the estate. Um, and uh, while the very first image you saw earlier, uh, 
uh, yeah, thank you, uh, was photographed at a children's nursery. And uh, while photographing, it was very apparent to me the type of places in which the city require more care. Uh, here, um, it's uh, the children and the elderly are, are much more susceptible to the fever, for example. And um, yeah, we can go back. Next, thank you. So the theme departing and arriving to me was uh, very clear in a way in this body of work and in terms of slipping between the themes of memory and displacement, uh, which harkens back to the Freudian idea that the subconscious has no sense of like time and place and uh, the state of in-betweenness and, and the fog of uncertainty, so to speak. Yeah, yeah that's all. Um, in terms of uh, the process, I think I mentioned earlier that I reached out to fumigation companies and followed them on the island initially, but um, since developing the project, I've also begun taking more input from the community as people have been sharing with me fumigation notices in their residential estates. And I believe it kind of presents a more comprehensive view of documenting the event around the island rather than from, from just one or a collective of sources. I mean, after um, listening to all like three of you speak, you know, like what I gather, um, you know, especially like from Miki's uh, uh, photos uh, for, for, you know, like, like Inconvenient Sunset and, and, and um, sorry, correct, right? Inconvenience, uh, inconvenient, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, Convenient Sunset and... Um, convenient and, and, Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, there's also that betrayal of the camera also, you know. Um, you know, where, whereby, you know, you know, you spoke about surveillance, you know, so suddenly, you know, the, the, the camera becomes, um, uh, um, you know, kind of like turn, turn, turn its, its, its head around as well in, in that sense, you know, and, and you know, that use of, of text also, you know, talks about, you know, drawing, drawing uh, uh, the, the viewer in as well, because sometimes, you know, um, uh, many times, you know, photos are, are incomplete in that sense, you know, while, while Sri, you know, uh, looks also at, at photography, you know, in, in terms of metaphors and, and, and symbols or so, you know, incorporating that in her work. And while for Cathy, you know, it, it, she, you tap on, on the unseen aspects, you know, of photography. So, you know, this also highlights, you know, how photography is, is also very insufficient, you know, to capture uh, real experiences. Um, so, you know, even though, you know, the next question that I'm going to ask you guys is, is about your creative inspirations and, and, and what are the factors that also influence your creative uh, decisions, um, especially in using photography as the main medium. Um, do you all also, this is a added question, do you also see any challenges ahead, especially, you know, with easy access to photo making and also online sharing? Sorry, um, can you yeah. repeat the question, please? So the question is, um, what are your creative inspirations and what are the factors uh, that influence your creative decisions? So, you know, as, as an added on question, it's do you also see any challenges ahead, especially, you know, with easy access to photo making and online photography sharing? Um, shall I go first or? Anyone can go first. Yeah. Okay. Do I go first? Sorry. Sure. Or, okay, Kathy, go ahead. Oh, um, thank you. Um, I guess what you, you mentioned earlier in terms of like uh, the fact and fiction of photographic, uh, you know, the heart of photographic and always looks at the indexical like documents of moments in time and kind of shifts uh, in time becoming like a fact and a fiction or like a past. And uh, it is this paradox kind of that photography allows us to look at moments or scenes in a way that we would never have been able to look at uh, or visit in the same way which feeds an investigative nature. Um, and that in a way like sort of holds me within the photographic medium. Um, yeah, inspiration, I guess, kind of comes in, in very many different forms. Uh, and uh, yeah, 
I think uh, in terms of my practice, like because I, I shoot in medium format uh, film, I feel like it sort of slows down the process in a way. And um, with technology, um, it's kind of a challenge sometimes uh, working within film uh, because there are some chemicals uh, which we cannot have access to in Singapore for um, creating color processing, for example. So there's this change with uh, technological advancement. Um, there is this duality within uh, working on the photographic medium and presents challenges working uh, uh, more materiality. Um. Um, for me, um, the point that you mentioned about um, the photographic image, it's, it's not so clear, right? For, and um, I think that's the main strength of, um, that I like about photography. The fact that it's, it's, um, it's, quite, it's quite great. You know? um, I think uh, David Campney once talked about the, the pictures. It's, you know how it's it's good at describing things. So, you know, whether with, with a man who's coughing has a red shirt or something, but it, it doesn't tell us whether he has a cough or a TV or whatever. So, in in on that sense, I I find it's a strength because it's for me that that allowed the work to lead on to a con other conversation or discussion, which sometimes. I might not plan it, but it, it gave that opportunity for for the world to travel. Rather than if you know if, if it's to be so concrete, as in um, perhaps you know compassion essays or something. And to answer about the technology of how there's so many images these days, right? I think that's. That's that's not a problem for me, and it, photography is it's always always been about technology. And um, in this moment in time, when there's, I think the last ten years, right, there's there's been more images produced than in the rest of the humankind history. And this sort of fact, you know, that everyone can be a photographer, everyone can take the image. I think it's it's forced us to be slower. For those who are uh, making, you know, photography-related work, you know, with, with camera, with film, or I, I think that's 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 really important because, um, you know, photography used to be about speed back back in the sixties, let's say when um, when there was no internet or you know when when we we were still relying on. Um, for the journalists to fly off to a certain place to, to capture that. And we sort of have to have faith in, in, in those people. But, but with, with the technology we have today, we, there's much more playground for us and much more uh, resource and content for us to, um, to explore. And for me, that's, that, that can only be a good thing. Yeah, uh, again, uh, to me, I am uh, uh, quite a spontaneous person. Uh, I mean, I hardly uh, think or come at where, like, okay, I, I will do like this project or that project. Like, uh, my works are mostly about uh, uh, things uh, which are like very close to me and like uh, nearest of my cycle. I am more interested in like daily life and like small things uh, than the uh, big phenomena. Like, for example, I do care also like uh, like political changes, uh, riots, and like uh, protests, and but. Um, I honestly, I don't find my like very uh, like immediate position in uh, things uh, like that. 
So I better tell like my uh, like personal story, like uh, uh, like some of my works are like about uh, like relationship with my grandparents, and so I mostly work uh, personal stories. And uh, again, like as I come from like development background, uh, I'm also like interested in certain uh, uh, social stories. And in that case, I always uh, try to uh, my posi personal position like within that uh, issue. So most of uh, my um, projects uh, came like uh, very uh, organically. Uh, uh, and that's uh, like what uh, my uh, inspiration came from. Like for example, since uh, I was young, when I started photography, I really like Nangodin, like photography and like his, uh, her friends and families uh, like that. Uh, in terms of like media and technology, I also uh, work uh, with uh, like analog uh, these days a lot. I uh, the good thing is I really like it. I really like slow down my pace. Uh, like who is like quite a like quick uh, person and like think me more. And I also uh, like like that concentration. Like when we work uh, with like analog like. I, I developed like uh, uh, myself, like everything I made by myself. And so I, I quite like uh, that uh, uh, process. Uh, but uh, uh, for me, it's like uh, for, for some projects, I don't have reason to work on analog. So uh, work by work, I decide like which uh, like medium I will be uh, using, why I always have the reason. And these days I'm also trying to expand like more media. I used a sound and like uh, a little bit of uh, like videos like in, in my work. And, uh, uh, and my recent uh, project is I collaborate with a painter. So uh, the painter paint on like my my photograph. And so we, we work on uh, the uh, project uh, together. Uh, and. Uh, it's like for me a uh, way of like expressing in a uh, more different ways. Yeah. So um, from from all this, uh, do you all expect a certain emotional impact uh, or reaction from your viewers? And also, did you did any of your works manage to cause uh, social or political impact as well? I think uh, I uh, never have uh, messages I want to send through my walks. I just want people to look at, uh, see, question, and talk, uh, make thinking on the subject and the underlying issues through my work and uh, the my. It just I personally uh, don't believe our walks. Uh, bring immediate impact or change in society, but I still want to believe our work can open at a conversation and engagement at uh, different levels. Uh, like uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, can, can you uh, flesh out uh, the two guest images? So when I was uh, like showcasing uh, this uh, Demeta work at uh, different uh, galleries in, in Yangon, um, uh, I mean, uh, the girls, two girls at the gallery, yeah. And so like, uh, like I have like this uh, kind of like experienced uh, young kids, uh, like when they, like, it's a, a group uh, exhibition. Uh, uh, and so I actually, I, uh, uh, we organized the exhibition by uh, ourselves. And so, I mean, like uh, there is note uh, the curator at the show and so, uh, uh, and so, so I used uh, that uh, like a black, uh, it's not a real black, black stained uh, uh, clocks. Uh, and so, uh, and so uh, all the like children, like mostly like really like curious about like uh, the work. And so they, uh, they don't know anything about like menstruation or period, but they start to explore uh, uh, about it. And so that's really uh, like, like a profound uh, experience uh, for me. And uh, 
another experience is uh, so why we were having uh, that uh, exhibition in a gallery in Yangon. Uh, so at one point, uh, the gallery uh, told me, uh, so they, at the very first, they have uh, showed all the images I selected. But at one point, they uh, contacted and told me, Shui, we have to uh, drop down some of your images because we are in the like kind of like official registration process with the government official and as part of the process the government official are visiting our gallery so you know this is quite a, a sensitive topic and uh, you know culturally taboo and so we don't like want to take that risk so let us uh, drop down like while uh, the government officials are visiting some of uh, your photos uh, and so I was uh, also uh, there when the government official visit uh, uh, at the gallery. So they look at uh, uh, around the gallery and when they saw uh, this work, uh, actually the project statement was there, but they did not see it. Uh, and But they did not take this work uh, as a like, uh, like women's menstrual experience. They look at the images and they told, oh, you are talking about Bami's political situation. So with the blood and, you know, some <laughs> of the, you know, violent uh, images, they, they see it as a like uh, kind of like protest or you know whatever like political images but that uh, moment uh, uh, made me think uh, that uh, actually I, I, I am really interested to uh, uh, ask them and talk with them but I should not provoke uh, them you know with my work uh, like because of the gallery and so I did not ask and I was not able to uh, talk with them but that uh, moment like reflect me that uh, maybe uh, I wonder, like uh, those like authority, like the people in the position, they, they may think like, yeah, artists uh, like me, like walk and respond on a uh, like political issue. They don't see, you know, this as and um, like obvious, like uh, like uh, like personal political act, like young women artists will be talking about. They cannot like associate it at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. why for me, like, it's uh, quite uh, uh, important to, uh, like, uh, so I'm not like, okay, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm saying, okay, menstruation should not be too like that, but I want to showcase my work as much as possible and people to open at the conversation and start thinking the question. Yeah, that's my stance. So, so no one corrected uh, these uh, politicians? <laughs> <laughs> no, for the save our gallery, like to secure the registration process, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I think um I shared I'm with... quite uh, uh not uh, comfortable. Yeah. Mm. So I, I guess I'm guessing they're all males or they're all men, right? Yeah, all men. Yeah, that's also interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, just share, just sharing. I think I, you, you, you knew, you, you heard about this story, but uh, I mean, I will share it again. It's uh, when I did the tours, the public tours, right? I will always ask people, you know, when they see your work, you know. So before I explain the work, you know, what are you seeing? Do you know what uh, Sui is talking about here in the works? You know, and some of the girls, the women were all just like normally just like cover their mouth or they just like look at you like that, you know. And it's, it's amazing that even in Singapore, in like a, say, such a modern society, no one dares to say the word menstruation or period, even in Singapore. So, so I found it that uncanny and, and, and quite funny also. And also at the same time, uh, quite alarming as well. You know, that, that even in, in modern society, it's still a taboo. You know, menstruation is still a taboo. Why can't you say the word menstruation? You know, it's, it's, it's normal. You know, it's like what most normal what most women have to go through normally, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so that's why I, I felt like, you know, your, your, your photos, your work was, was important in that sense, you know, to be shown, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you, Sui. So moving on. We were coming to 10, so we better hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think for me, uh, people tend to kind of think the work is, is, uh, is quite staged. And uh, I guess there's this like play with fact and fiction within the work itself, like smoke itself is, uh, is quite theatrical. And um, 
yeah however i i can't really like stage these images and uh, as the indexical documentation for where it occurs and the surrounding architecture for me is really important to the series and uh, this process of investigation of the socioeconomical uh, kind of like divide between the types of residential housing uh, which can afford this type of organized service regularly and uh, those which cannot is quite important to to my investigation of the work whilst I'm photographing. Um, in terms of uh, people usually meet it with a bit of a curiosity like uh, why fumigations and um, others uh, just look at the image pictorially itself and um, find characters or animals like kind of in the shape of the form clouds like especially kids uh, they tend to be uh, quite observant about <laughs> about uh, what they see and imparting their own kind of impressions on on the image um, but kind of no matter the the entry point to the work um, my images don't really aim to explain um, the world or you know nearly it's just to open the conversations about fumigations. And uh, yeah, earlier I mentioned, I've been kind of taking more input from the public and uh, people now kind of send me these uh, videos or photographs of, of fumigations in their own, in their own estate or that they see pictures of as well happening in their, in their neighborhood, which um, I've kind of been storing in a folder as kind of like a community archive as well, uh, which I quite enjoy. The, the first time when I encountered your photos, I can't help but think of um, you know, when you watch movies or you know, it's, like, it's a part of like a film set and you, know, you wonder whether you know, it's, it's someone filming, you know, doing a film set. Is it part of a film set or is it part of like some bombing exercise or some you know, police or, 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 or army exercise where you know, they're they they are setting, setting off a, a bomb, you know, that, that, mm. that bomb has been detonated. Uh, yeah, dignated, you know. So it got it, it also got that kind of very um, I mean maybe my mind is warped, but it was this very dystopic feel as well, you know. Like uh, you know what if because Singapore we, we always know Singapore is a very safe place, you know, uh, in terms of politically mm. and even policing is always a very safe space. And and to see uh photos like that, you know, you wonder whether you know should I interpret this as something of danger or something of Oh, you know, it's it's a fantasy, you know, like a dreamscape even. Yeah, so, I think uh, also kind of like approaching um, the smoke, I think, yeah, you're right. Like people tend to kind of see it as um, sort of like something to run away from. Um, a lot of the time, like whilst I'm photographing, it's uh, these yeah. like boys in their school uniforms just like running away from like the scene completely. And um, yeah, I think uh, the smoke itself is, is quite a, is quite a, a tense sort of um, yeah. emotion, depending on where you're coming at it from and, right. and what it means to you. And, and Miti. Um, can, can you open the folder for please? With the video of 51, number 51. Okay. So um, the question was the um, impact from the viewer, right? Or how, um, I think for me, I, there's always a, a distance that I want to create in my, in my work. And so that starts from the, the lens that I use. So there's, there's always that, um, it gives me that, that sort of space and the feeling of not encroaching, which I think is, um, it's, it's important in, in how I want to convey or how how I, I don't want to be interfering too much with the, um, the subject that um, that I'm shooting and um, the more the more I I work in my photography in the last you know in, in the last couple of years I realized that the image itself is um, maybe it's, it's only 30 percent of um, of of how I want to um, to convey the work and it's the material itself is is so important in um, in in helping me kind of um, hinting or uh, explaining things and let's let's say for example in this uh, 2014 empty lot work this was um, a work shot of the lands waiting for um, 
for it to be constructed. So um, land that's about to be turned into a commercial uh, or, or residential site. And for this, at the exhibition space, I, I use a, a light bamboo paper and I, I just pin it um, with, with nail on top and I allowed it to, the image to flow through the, uh, you know, through, through the power of the aircon in within the space itself. Next picture, please. Could you go to the next picture? Um, no, it's picture number 52, the, the one right after the video. Um, not, not, not this one, this number 52 in folder four. Yep. So you can see it is from the sideline as well. So the, um, it's reflect a sort of temporal change. And next picture, please. And next to the, this work, there's a row of, uh, images that I, I have taken of a um, newly built condo. And the way I presented it, uh, next picture please, I printed in a high contrast Ilford paper and it's neatly framed. So that sort of relationship that I want to create, but um, the meaning itself, if, if you just see the image, it, it won't say everything. So in, in, in this case, you know, a, a lot of the material helps in explaining or hinting of what I want to say. Could you go to the next picture, please? And it's, um, size is also important. So in a convenient sunset, the picture of 7-Eleven stores, I intentionally printed the word large, so it's more akin to the museum, so garage that uh, one might visit. And I wanted to create that sort of um, communal feeling because if you know one image is large it can be viewed by many people and that's um, in a sense that's a sort of similar to when we enter the uh, convenience store and, and you know how, how we consume the space so it's not just one of us so there's um it, it, it involves a lot of people so there's a reflection in that as well and next picture please that's also the a question of format if I, I think a lot of us, especially in um, in with, with news, news in photography, you know, when when we look at um, an image, let's say, if even if it's the same sunset image, but if it, if it's taken in a thirty-five mil format, you know, the initial reaction of us might um, link it more toward the um, traditional kind of press photography or let's say if the image is taken in a six by seven format, perhaps, you know, more akin to um, large film photography, people might think a bit more in terms of uh, architectural photography for, for, let's say for this work. And I, I actually intentionally made this, um, made this work at an off format so that it's not really six by seven. And, and in the hope that when people look look at the work and face the work, the first thing that comes to their mind is not about the, um, the technicality of the pictures or how, you know, oh, this, this is great, it's so sharp or something. And in the hope that the, the story is or, you know, the, the, the thing that I want to say come out first before the, uh, you know, the, the, the discussion of the, 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 the technicality might, uh, might follow after. Next picture, please. And this, this um, kind of process following into the way I, I work with books as well. You can just flick through for this one. Um, next, next picture, please. This is from the Dream Property Exhibition books. And I invited um, urban academic filmmakers, um, bar owners to contribute to this exhibition book and none of their, their works that are linked to, to my work itself, but it's sort of loosely related on the uh, 
the growth of the city. And I intentionally made it into a loose sheet in, the, um, in order to reflect that the work is unfinished and it, you know, it, there's a possibility of further conversation or thought or discussion going on. Next, please. Next, please. Next. And it's in, in the same way in the, term, the, the poem books that, that I made. So um, the book reflected that as well. I, I, at first I, I thought about, um, I wanted to make this poem book and to be similar to um, a penguin classic book that you can put in your blazer. And so that's, that's, that's why the, the book made in its size and the paper itself is an imported European paper, kind of all wise. But um, mainly the designer who noticed it, but even though not, not everyone might notice that details, but I think it's, it's also an important part to consider, you know, with, with all this experience when, when people picking up the work. So it's not just the image itself that, that's, that's speaking to the audience. Next, please. In, in contrast to um, another work on real estate as well, but this time on the 90s um, real estate boom, I, I made this in a tiny UV outer gloss just to, to reflect the nature of those uh, periods. Next one, please. And another contrast, this is made with a uh, laser printer, the project on typology. And it's made as cheap as possible and printed on demand. So every time you print it, the quality of the work is different. And in this way, it reflects on the, uh, the sort of um, political pam pamphlet or that, that sort of um, easy to distribute nature that I want to get at. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I think that I hope that answers the question. So it, it, the more I, I, I work, the more I realize that um, it's um, the, the image itself, it's a starting point, but uh, let's say about you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, then it, it's about all the other materials as well that, uh, that's helped to um, create uh, that body of work. Uh, very quickly, if uh, you, know, you guys are going to add on more, it's like, do you feel that you know, if, as photographers or artists, you know, that we can still play an important role in shifting, you know, societal or political views? I think in Thailand recently, you know, Thailand, we had a big protest, right? Yeah. A lot of youth and they are the one that pushed the limits and it's, it's, it's not true art from that instance, the guy who, talk about, I don't know if we can talk about this one <laughs> on this yeah, space. No, you can, yes, yes. Yes, okay, and anyway, the, the guy who talk about a king or something, he's a, he's a lawyer, like a, a late 30-something lawyer, you know, reasonably young guys. And all these um, young activists, they're, they're not artists as such, but they're the one that's pushing the, the, the boundary of um, what's, what's the society are uh, acting or rebelling against it. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought a lot about, you know, it's, is it, is it necessary for me to be, to have to be part of that? Or, you know, do I need to make like a real stand against or for it? And I, I, I think it's, for me, I think it's not necessary because, you know, um, there's so many other roles that, um, that we can fill in, you know, from, from recording as purely as a photographer, from recording the event neutrally or, or from making art that reflecting something on the long term. So it doesn't have to be for the immediate. So I think there's, there's still a role in art and it, it doesn't have to be for a major audience or a big audience, but it's, it's still an important part of, uh, of how we can help, you know, everyone can help push them forward. There's more of starting a, a dialogue yeah, yes, for sure. And um, it's, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, there's only approach now and, and art is, is, is only one way of doing it. 
How about how about the both of you? Ian, Kathy. Mm, I feel like with in in Singapore, sometimes it's it's a bit about reading between the lines. In a way, um, there are a lot of photographic works, uh, you know, by by Sim Chien, for example. And recently, came across some other uh, like archive images of uh, by Tio Yen Tech of of um, Singapore's offshore islands, uh, like Blau Sekang, which is um, now Sembuku Island, which is where we through our, um, where Singapore's waste goes to, for example, and uh, through the project uh, Island Nation, which is a documentary project on the Orang Laut by um, Zachary Zainal and uh, another group of uh, other photographers, for example. But in, in that aspect, um, that also talks about um, our nation history and sort of uh, it's political in the sense of talking about how indigenous people were, you know, uprooted and um, are now uh, living in public housing in Singapore, for example. So there's also, there's all of these, um, in a way, uh, politics there. Um, I think it's just more sometimes about uh, what's out there and it has to be, um, for the audience, they have to sort of engage a lot more and read a lot more uh, into the work rather than uh, receiving it at face value in a way. What about Sue? Uh, me, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. Like sometimes like people ask a lot about like what uh, the artist like bring to the society or uh, what the uh, artist will contribute uh, to the society. Uh, I, I, I really uh, don't uh, understand it because uh, Myanmar is like one of the countries which used uh, like art uh, as a, a, a propaganda, like a lot by those who are in power, like historically. Uh, so like, uh, for example, like whenever like we have like exhibitions or, or programs, uh, like, uh, like uh, all the like uh, medias uh, where uh, the first uh, question they will be asking us is, what is uh, like your message from this walk and what message you want to convey it uh, from this walk? So I always answer, I don't have <laughs> any message. So for me, uh, it's more like, rather than like people like asking like artists, like what you will like bring us or, you know, contribute uh, to the society. I want to like, like, I mean, like in, in my context, people to see uh, the role of uh, like artists uh, like in a society, like we as like teachers or doctors or engineers like that, yeah. I guess, um, you know, photography, you know, the power of photography, you know, talks, you know, or, or delivers uh, what you call, you know, this, because it's able to capture reality, it, it kind of satisfy, you know, this, this, this um, delivery of truth, you know. But when we talk about truths, you know, um, T-R-U-T-H, you know, truths, you know, um, it, it's also aligned, you know, with, with um, power and, and also knowledge as well. Uh, but in, a, in that sense, uh, we also, you know, forget, you know, that with, with this power and knowledge, you know, a lot of times, you know, truths are, are also manipulated or, or, or distorted, you know, in, in, in ways also you know, that are, are unseen. And, and especially when, you know, when we look at, at images, you know, of, of um, power, you know, not say power, but in terms of images of like strife, of suffering and, and even of struggles or so, you know, we, we, we sometimes wonder whether, you know, these, these images has, has been distorted in any ways or so. Uh, um, to champions certain uh, um, causes like, you know, that are, are not clearly defined. Yeah. Um, that said, um, do you guys have anything else you want to add? If not, uh, we can take some questions uh, from the floor before we close this off. I think just, just something I came up when you talk about photography and its effect, actually when I think about COVID situation right now, it's really interesting, maybe just personally for me, it's not driven by images that 
you know, making people scared or, you know, be afraid. Or It's all about the number. And mm. maybe it's, it's the first kind of, you know, modern incident or something where the, the numbers are more important. You know, people see how many deaths for that today or how many people are in, infected. And it's not about the, the pictures of someone getting infected. So it became more about the number and it's actually relating to that is how easy it is to manipulate, right? Like let's just say Thailand just in the last week or two weeks with it, suddenly there's so much surge of, um, of COVID and all this kind of numbers that driven um, the way people are behaving, the way, you know, or creating a certain worry. So for, for me, that's, that's really interesting that it's, in, in this period in time, it's not actually the photograph, the photograph, the image itself that's that's um, that's, that's uh, influencing us. It's all this, um, you know, new, new great numbers that comes up every day that we look, or even in air pollution, right? I, I look at it every day. PM two point five, you know, what's what's actually going on? Um, yes, I don't know how to conclude it. Okay. Um, I mean, I I've got things to add, but I think that that might might make us go over time by a lot. But <laughs> so I'm trying to hold back. Uh, uh, yeah. Do, do we have any questions from the audience first? Or the audience cannot log in to give us questions. I mean, I better apologize. I think some people had problems uh, uh logging into our 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 talk. Uh, so. Uh, I apologize to those people who had problems with getting the, the correct link to log in. Um, and, but thank you for joining us nonetheless. Uh, um, yeah, if there are no questions, uh, would you all like me to ask that final question before we round this up? So my final question is actually, uh, I wanted to find out like uh, whether you guys you know, aim to achieve or accomplish, you know, what you guys aim to achieve or accomplish your photography practice for the next few years? Okay, I'll go first. I'm working on a project. It's my third sunset project. And it's um, still on the issue of the city, on the... Um, uh, a place in city city center that that's about to be you know could be moved, so that's what I'm planning to do. That's in Thailand, right? Yes, in Bangkok. Oh, okay. So it's still yeah, ongoing. Uh, someone asked for Miti and Kathy. There are two questions. Okay, maybe we do the Miti one first. Uh. So I think since Miti was speaking, uh, what, why and what community specifically? Oh, you mean the community I was just yeah. talking about, right? So it's, it's actually a, um, one of the major piece of land in the city centre. And it's, you know, it's, it was originally inhabited by um, Work, working class people working at near the um, the shipping site, and yeah, so uh, it's there's been a, a friction of um, of um, of of them, you know, news of them moving or whether or not they're moving, but because the land is owned by um, by by the government, and they're not making money, so uh, oh. it's it's inevitable that. Um, the, the place will be um, redeveloped. Yeah. And and for Kathy, a question: uh, Do you think there's a sense of prolonged the delicate violence that's going that's ongoing in the terms of fumigation in relation to the lack of balance coexisting with nature? I think definitely. Um, in terms of Singapore, because it's it's such a urbanized landscape. Um, you know we. We're living in Kampox and, you know, 50 years later, uh, we are now in uh, one of the most developed cities in the world. So there's this, um, in sort of like a blink of an eye, so to speak, we have um, are still dealing with, uh, you know, tropical 
problems of um, you know mosquitoes and and insects and diseases which are transferred um, you know but uh, at the same time it's like there are all of these uh, technological dev developments and um, in terms of sort of uh, fumigations I guess um, it's been going on for for a while but also development in in the area hasn't really progressed as much as the other uh, the other developmental areas or direct research areas because it's meant as sort of a, a, a dirty kind of um, field of research in a way of like pest control for example whereas you know humanity is more interested in in going to space sometimes than uh, solving our own issues. Um, so in that sense, uh, yeah, I feel that, um, I feel very much so. And a question for Sui, uh, do you think spontaneity is method for you or perhaps your peers in Myanmar to navigate the tricky, uncertain political situations in Myanmar? Uh, I think uh, it's quite a difficult question. I think uh, our experiences uh, may vary from one person to another. Uh, uh, maybe I just give uh, an example. One of my mentors uh, uh, always said, we photographers uh, have two guys, uh, uh, cat and dog. <laughs> so uh, uh, cat are uh, like uh, quite, uh, uh, how should I say it? Very, they are like very quite like affirmative and like certain on like their position. And so uh, some are like photographers and artists are like they already have like like specific like ambition and like also like uh, their working process is quite uh, since the beginning like very systematic. The others are like talk uh, like like just like smelling around like in the environment. So I'm like personally more kind of uh, like talk like uh, photographer so uh, like uh, uh, like for me is uh, uh, sometimes I also like uh, try to walk out uh, like uh, like very like systematic uh, since the beginning so when I try to walk out like very systematic I always get lost like like most of my mentors who uh, very like closely work uh, with me uh, like they told me you are like quite intuitive person. So you work with like your intuition. So just uh, like go with it. So that's, that, that's uh, the way I work. But uh, like, like even in like my collective, like some of my, like uh, my uh, like uh, uh, fellow collective members, like they are like quite very like straightforward and systematic. I, I think our experience uh, like may vary like from person to another. I don't know, I answered the question. <laughs> so uh, maybe uh, Sui and, and Kathy, you would like to continue answering that, that last question I asked about, you know, whether your plans for the next five years in terms of photography practice. Oh, okay. Maybe you just, maybe you just go with that first before we answer that other new question. Uh, okay, I mean, I mean for the project from the World Press, I clearly see a difference in society status where the photographer is the privileged person and the less provoked uh, ex open their homes to you ethically. Okay, there's some Typo, ethically speaking, right? Especially mm -hmm. open their homes to you. Uh, okay. I think that's uh, to who is that directed to? It's a privilege. Yeah, we're lost here. Uh, is this for Miti or is this for Sui? <laughs> I clearly see a difference uh, in society status so where the photographer is the privilege. Well, press, I clearly see a difference in society status. 
Maybe and then the question is to you, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I I think it's probably for me, but uh, what is I mean for the Yeah, for you, maybe. Um, what 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 is the question exactly that it um I can you was regarding the, the the community that you you, you chose to yeah work with. yeah so um I basically see a difference in society status where the photographer is the privileged person and the less provoke provoke X X open their homes to you. <laughs> Ethically well, speaking, I I think it's short form, but you're trying to interpret that short form. But I I guess um, who mm -hmm. was was trying to talk about the ethics, right? About going in into this, um, okay, let's say uh, a low income, a, a slum community as that. And I I thought a lot about um, when I was uh, when I started this project. So actually, for this work, I contacted the foundation. So from the the foundation that's um, that's based in in this community, and they have been working within the community for you know for the last thirty forty years, and that's that's how I um, I started my dialogue with 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 the community. So I went to the foundation and I talked to them about my intention of. Um, of photographing and um, everything is done in um, in a way that it needs consent. So um, I go through the um, the community with um, with people that they know. So it's the um, many of the community leaders. And before I enter, of course, you know, I ask whether it's okay if I take the interior shot of their homes. And this and 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 I also have. Um, you know, there's there's a letter that I I write about it that um, about the rights of the images in case that you know I'm going to use it later for let's say for a book or for an exhibition. You know, there will be there will be a dialogue with them whether they'll be okay with that or you know they they will know all about it. You know how the work will be produced or I I haven't thought about I, I haven't even thought about would the work be sold yet? But I, I think it's, it's an important part of, um, of you know, it's, it's important in, in terms of, of having someone to record this because it's, it's one of the last kind of, um, like, I don't want to say gold mine, but, but if you can see what I mean, that where people would be taken advantage of and how, you know, how, how would we deal with it? I mean, I, I don't have to answer to it all, but I'm just in the process now of, of finding out about it and going into the community. And hopefully, you know, I can make something that, you know, obviously I think with, with everything we do, with, when it's related to uh, with people who are less fortunate, you know, we are somehow, you know, we are, we're obviously, you know, taking something from them. So that's, that's, that's something I'm, I'm really careful about. Yeah, and it's 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 a lot that I think about as well. How you know when 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 they talk about the um, the tone of the image, the colors, am I presenting this in a in like a, a colorful way? You know, how um, how do how do people from you know from the first world? when they think of Thailand, what, what do they expect? Like a, mm. a colorful kind of places or, mm. you know, those, those sort of ideas all, all come into consideration when, when I make this work. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, we are, we're past 10.30. <coughs> so um, if there are no more questions, will, will you like wrap this up or you would, uh, Sri and Cathy would like to Answer that final question that I ask, so that we can round it up. Um, yeah, just just very quickly, I suppose. Um, yeah, I guess over the lockdown, I've I've uh, sort of uh, you know working on project with um, my personal family archive also because I've moved, so I've sort of been dealing with these uh, thematics of of uh, home and uh, just exploring themes of uh, feminine intergenerational heritage. 
and the uh, histories of, of migrations as well. Um, yes, yeah, so it's very, it was very interesting to, to listen to Sui's uh, method of working in, in particular for, for this uh, project that I'm working on. Uh, and Sui? Uh, personally, I just want to keep working the stories that's the other hand, I came from a community where resources and markets are very, very limited. That's why I'm a part of a, like a women photographer collective. And like we are three years old now and we part of us founded uh, together and we have been working a lot of activities from producing our own works uh, uh, in our own practice to conducting like educational and outreach uh, programs uh, in the communities. Uh, so it's not always uh, an easy uh, uh, experience for me uh, who uh, just want to uh, stay uh, quietly uh, working on my own work. Uh, but uh, I feel it's important to pay it forward uh, where you can from. Uh, so the collected uh, attributes a lot in my group. Yeah. That's why like in the next few years, I want to believe my growth will also like contribute to uh, the industrial growth in Myanmar. Yeah. Okay, thanks Sui and Kathy. Uh, one final question for Miti. Um, I think this, this is quite close to the question I asked about, you know, emotional impact uh, from the works. Um, so maybe just to quickly go touch on it again, it's uh, someone asked uh, the political public situation in Thailand are full of drama and high notes in contrast, your works are quiet and pensive, how does your fellow countrymen react to your works? Um, reaction, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe they hate it I, I don't know, maybe they talk behind my back but um, in general, I mean the, the work that I have been concentrating on has been on the growth of the city or let's say, for example, of the community that I'm shooting. And in that sense, you know, a lot of uh, people rights are involved. And this, this link to uh, democracy and democratic, democratic right of, um, of, um, of, of, of the people there. So um, it, it's linked indirectly to politics as well. And of, of course, I have those um, political um, books that I made. It's, I would say those started off from, um, from my own um, questioning of myself as a photographer. So back in 2010 or something, maybe around then, you know, about the um, technological aspect of it, whether to go out to take photos. And, but that's, that's how it de developed, but it's, I think it, I, I would say it, it's more of a, not a sideline as such, but it's, it's, it hasn't become the main part of my work. And I think it's also because, you know, as you say, there's, there's so many people doing political works in Thailand already. And for me, I feel no, I don't see a, a point of repeating what people have done. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess I sort of have the, the focus that I want to do and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not stepping on anyone else's toe in that regard. And I think it, it could still, you know, it, it, it could still con contribute to, um, to some sort of um, social or, you know, photography society effect or something. So that, that's, that would be my answer. Would you all agree with the statement um, when I say that each of you, each of your works are quietly political? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't run away from it. You know, if everything is, you know, if everything is, you know, what, what, how we live in the city, you know, the, the first thing you walk up is of the city. There's already a political decision, right? Like, yeah. Why is the pavement in Bangkok so bad? <laughs> you know, that's already political if you want to talk about that. So there's, there's so many ways that you can talk about politics without, you know, being super upfront about it. 
Uh, even even for Sui and Kathy as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my uh, feminist political act. Sorry? Yes, my feminist political act. Okay. Uh, oh, we have another one. <laughs> uh, another one for Miti again. Do you want to answer this, mm. Miti? So... Um, I some of your background in real estate, photographing slums uh, for some may seem problematic. How do you feel? I thought you answered that already. Yeah, I, I think I, I can only be honest and open with the way I approach the work as, as possible. And, you know, of course, some people may view it as, uh, as you know, maybe view it as, as a negative or something. But um, I think from the work that I have done in the past 10 years, it allowed me to have a dialogue and conversation with a lot of interesting people, and I, I learned from that. And um, at the end of the day, you can't—I mean, I can't please or convince everyone. So, um, you know, if there's some people who feel that is problematic, then um, I mean, I—I I can only do—I um, can only be as honest as I can in the way I, I approach my work. Um, I think sometimes problematic, uh, even though it's tricky, um, you know, the more it's problematic, I think the more it has to be done. You might disagree with me, but mm. uh, yeah, because it really opens up dialogues, you know, it is, rather than just keeping silent and, and not showing anything. Uh, it's, it's, that's, that's sadder, isn't it? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Not not everything is meant to feel happy and 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 feel good. Uh. So yeah, come send the hate mail. Uh, but yeah, sorry. I mean sorry to, to, to wrap this up very loosely. Um but you know because time is running out, um we, we're gonna close. And it's also getting uh, pretty late in Southeast Asia. Uh some of us have to wake up early tomorrow. Uh so, so with that, um I thank everyone who's tuning in. And also uh, for all those that have sent in your questions, um, please come visit um, SIPF if you are in Singapore. Uh, it's still ongoing uh, for um, uh, Admiral Hill, 37 Admiral Hill, and also uh, along the MRT stations, uh, and also at DEC. Um, and uh, also be sure to check out um, Sui, Cathy's, and Miti's uh, work online as well. Um, the links are in the SIPF website uh, to, to their work. Um, so to find out more of their, about their practices also, if you, like, if you are curious. And okay, with that, um, thank you.